Hello and welcome to the Dream Team Professor podcast. This is a match day recap where we look at all the top point scorers and key talking points from Game Week 24 Sun Dream Team. Liverpool won away at Brentford 4 1, but at what cost? Potentially three injured strikers. Um, we had Diego Jota, who did get an assist and played really, really well in the first half, but he went off just before half time with um, a really horrible injury, a really unfortunate one. Someone landed on top of him. Um, did get an assist, did play really well, um, a really good assist for Darwin Nunes as well, taking goal, but it looks like he's now going to be out for up to two months, so someone that we're all going to be looking to get out of our dream teams. Um, the other potential injury, Darwin Nunes, he scored, but then came off at half-time. The goal was insane from Nunes, um, could have really put it away in a load of different ways, but decided to chip the goalkeeper. It wasn't even on, but really impressive. Seven points, another goal for him. Um, but taken off at half time, maybe a bit of a precaution. Apparently, he felt something. But now there's rumours circulating that he could end up missing the Carabao Cup final. And then Salah is the other one. So Salah was actually on the bench for this game. So a lot of people decided not to bring him in. Some people did. 23% owned in the top 1K. He came on for Diego Jota, who obviously picked up that injury. And then he went on himself uh, to get an assist for McAllister's goal and then grab a goal himself. So Salah is well and truly back. But is he? Um, apparently, there's a few pages online that are saying that he might have, have aggravated his hamstring injury as well. So we're waiting for a few more updates on Salah and Nunes. Jota's definitely out. But we're just waiting to hear what, um, well, any extra news on Salah um, and Nunes. Because Klopp done an interview today, but really didn't mention it too much at all. It was more of a wait and see. Um, so Allison was out for this game. He had a hamstring injury. So Kelleher come in in goal, got four points, five saves. Um, you also had Bradley, Connor Bradley coming back. Um, from his compassionate leave. He started this game, finished with just the three points, but again, was really impressive, looked really lively, had a really good shot in the first half. Um, I can see him doing pretty well. And then Robertson started on the other side, someone who I brought into my team. He got five points, seven um, player performance marks, which ended up with one bonus, but he was just one player performance mark off finishing with three bonus. So that would have been great. Um, four tackles in this game as well. So a couple of extra points there. Um, Diaz, Luis Diaz played well this game, got an assist, five points. Um, and then Gakpo came off the bench, grabbed the goal and assist after coming on at half time. He might be someone that you might want to look at as maybe a, a Jota or a Nunes replacement, but he's not someone that I've been very keen on um, when it comes to Dream Team. But a goal, assist, 10 points in this. Virgil van Dijk at the back, just the four points. Um, five player performance marks, got him one bonus. One big chance created and was so unlucky not to score himself. He hit the crossbar from a cross that came in or a corner that came in from Andrew Robertson. In Brentford, um, the main talking point really, another goal for Ivan Tony, making it four goals in five appearances. And honestly, should have had a penalty as well. Um, Robertson absolutely went through the back of him, um, crashed right into the back of Ivan Tony. I don't know how VAR looked at that and decided that it wasn't a penalty. So Tony finished on 12 points. Um, also had four shots on target in this game. So really, really impressive performance from Ivan Tony, And he is going to be playing this evening in that Man City game. I mentioned Man City playing later tonight, but they got a 1-1 draw against Chelsea this week. Um, Erling Haaland, 96% captained in the top 1K and delivered just the four points. Um, so captainers or owners will be hoping for a lot more tonight against Brentford. Um, Sterling scored against his old club, um, hadn't started the last two matches, but came in in this one, had three shots on target, um, finished up on 10 points as well. So he's someone that a lot of people had for the Chelsea double game weeks and then removed. So trolled quite a few people there. Um, Edison, the guy that doesn't really make saves very often, was forced to make five saves in this game. 
Uh, City was playing a really high line and Chelsea sort of kept hitting them on the counter-attack and actually quite impressive game from Edison. Five saves in this one, four points. Another busy player, Gusto, made eight tackles in this game. Had a really, really good battle with Doku. Finished up on nine points, um, got one bonus, eight tackles and two big chances created. So um, Gusto was fairly popular again when Chelsea had these doubles, but then he picked up an injury and I don't think many people then brought him back. Um, Cole Palmer is still in quite a lot of players, uh, quite a lot of players' teams. Um, he did have a good game, technically, but he blanked when it comes to Dream Team, just the two points. Um, Jackson for Chelsea, nine goals, three assists. And then Kevin De Bruyne actually finished on five bonus points. So maxed out the bonus, eight points. He had eight successful crosses when I was checking the... Uh, the bonus points on Dream Team. So again, a really good performance from De Bruyne. Just Haaland couldn't put the chances away in this one. I think I read that this is the um, this was a match where Haaland had his most XG without scoring since playing for City. Um, Rodri, clutch goal, 12 points. He only scores big goals. Uh, three bonus points, one shot on target and three tackles in this game. So I keep doing this sort of comparison between Doku, Rodri, Bernardo... Um, but Rodri's had a um, really good performance in this one. Doku, just the five points. Um, Gusto dealt with him really well, actually. Um, he did have quite a few chances, like dribbles, but never really had that end product there. Um, a little bit disappointing. And then Phil Foden also finished on five points. And Foden was unlucky. Um, he was one player performance marks off of getting three bonus points. Um, and if you like looking at how the bonus is all broken down on the screen here, ffstuff.co.uk, their match centre has a great breakdown of not only just the points, but the player performance marks. There's an alternate view and you can see why players got the bonus that they did. Um, Kyle Walker, corruption assist. Um, so he just sort of smacked the ball into the box, rebounded off a defender, and then it was Rodri that then put the shot away and Walker's ended up with an assist. Um, it's in the, well, it's, it's sort of in the rules. Um, the rules actually say if it comes off, if they're the player that the ball comes off of last, which it wasn't, but it was given on all, all um, fantasy formats. So that's the way it goes. I just don't like those ones. Uh, maybe I would have liked it if I had Kyle Walker in my team. Arsenal 5, Burnley nil. 21 goals in their last five matches. Three clean sheets in their last five as well. Um, Arsenal are really on it since their uh, winter break. We had goals from Erdegaard. Saka got two, one from the penalty spot and one in play. Trossard grabbed another goal and then Kai Havertz with one as well, just to rub it in. So Saka back to back braces and another penalty goal i must say these penalties from saka don't look convincing at all trafford was really quite close to getting that one um, but they all count 15 goals 12 assists he's beat his um attacking returns for last season already and we're only in february um, he's returned five games in a row now with six goals and one assist in his last five so really really great form from saka does have a lot of single game weeks coming up while a lot of players have doubles but I just think you can't take him out at the minute. Um, still to play for Arsenal as well. Porto um, will be tomorrow. So we might even have more goals uh, from Bakayo Saka. Erdegaard followed up his two assists last week with a goal and an assist in this game. 12 points for him. Um, eight goals and eight assists in total for the season. So he is really finding his form now. We did mention a couple of episodes ago that his attacking returns aren't quite what they were sort of last season um, but he's returned what two assists last week and a goal and an assist in this one so maybe he's getting back to his uh, goal scoring or assisting form. Kai Havertz six goals three assists now with this one and then Trossard um, he won the penalty for um, Bakayo Saka so grabbed an assist there and also scored his ninth goal of the season so Trossard is in really really good form at the moment um, scored three matches in a row and he's got four goals in five games uh, one that's a bit out there Kivior playing at left back while Zinchenko is out injured and um, Zinchenko I think isn't available for tomorrow either Kivior's got two assists in his last three matches now so he is finding his feet now in the defense even though he isn't really playing in his natural position Gabriel 10 points 
Uh, the Arsenal centre-backs were popular for this game week. So 10 points for Gabriel, just the one player performance mark off of getting three bonus points. And then Saliba, just a seven in this one, just a casual seven points for Saliba. Um, and then Ben White, one bonus. And then nothing for Declan Rice after his really good performance last week against West Ham. On to another 5-0 pasting. And this time it was from Brighton against Sheffield United. Sheffield United have been so, so poor. Uh, they've conceded five goals five times this season and even had the 8-0 loss against Newcastle. Um, it really, really was poor. And after the Holgate ridiculous, horrible challenge, everything went downhill. So starting off with Pascal Gross. Um, really impressive game from Pascal Gross and he's been brilliant on Dream Team so far this season. Uh, 12 player performance marks in this one got him the maximum bonus points. He got an assist, he had shots on target points, two big chances created um, and that's him on five goals and 12 assists for the season now with 36 bonus points. Um, fourth highest midfielder in the game and he's on penalties, free kicks, corners, everything. So he is one to look out for with this um, FA Cup double game week coming up next week. And of course, Europe is back for Brighton soon as well. So double game weeks galore for Pascal Gross if you decide to get him in. Three double game weeks in a row now. Um, Matoma, two assists, seven points. He's back with a bang. Uh, seven points, four player performance marks. So it was a little way off of getting bonus. Um, but he might be back on the radar now. And then you had a Dingra with two goals in his first game back from AFCON. 3.2 million he'll cost you and scored 15 points in this game. That was his seventh goal of the season. Um, Buonanotte, three goals in his last five. Flying all over the pitch here. Um, and then Dunk, an unlikely uh, goal contribution from him. He's actually on three goals, one assist for the season, which is not bad at all for a centre-half. 11 points in this one. Um, and an accidental rainbow flick and back heel, um, if you can find that video clip on Twitter. Um, Purvis Stupinian. He has been useless. I've had him in my team ever since he got sort of three hauls in a row since coming back from injury and he's done absolutely nothing since the minute I put him in. And he just keeps finding a way to stay in my team as I've had sort of two injuries a week for the last two weeks now, it seems. Um, I'm going to have to get him out. He's out of form and he's out of favour. He came on for just nine minutes at the end um, after Brighton took two defenders off for different players. So he wasn't even anywhere near first choice. Um, like I said, Sheffield United... Terrible for conceding. 65 goals they've conceded so far this season. That's 10 more than Burnley, um, who are the second worst defensive record in the Prem. So if you see Sheffield United up next, they could be a great one to target. Um, I think they've got Wolves up next. Um, and I think Arsenal are not that far away either. Um, let's have a quick look. Fixtures, Wolves, Arsenal, Bournemouth, Man United. Um, so it could be a case of going for Huang Neto, Saka, Solanke and then Hoyland to just pile on, attack Sheffield United because they cannot defend. Newcastle 2, Bournemouth 2, Anthony Gordon now on penalties without Isak and Wilson available. Put one away. Uh, Fabian Scher won the penalty by being pulled down in the box so he's ended up with an assist in this one. Um, Dubravka should have an assist really because his howler was terrible that set Solanke up for his goal. That was Solanke's 16th goal of the season. He's on five assists as well, so doing well for attacking returns. Only Haaland, Pedro and Salah have more goals um, in all competitions than Solanke when it comes to Dream Team. Um, he has a double coming up as well of Man City and Leicester in that FA Cup weekend. And in the game week 27, he's got Sheffield United and Luton both at home. So Solanke might be someone you want to keep an eye on. Um, last one, Bruno Guimaraes. Three bonus points in this one, 10 player performance marks. So he wasn't even far off of getting that five maximum bonus again. He's been incredible for bonus. I was kind of hoping that he would have picked up a booking in this game because he's on um, 
what is it, nine yellow cards. So if he gets the 10th, he'd be suspended for two matches. So I kind of wanted him to be suspended for the Arsenal game up next, but didn't happen. He's available for Arsenal, but just be careful. If you are looking to get Bruno in your team, he's one yellow card away from missing two matches. So I really don't think it's worth it. And I'd be very surprised if he does get through that Arsenal game without picking up a yellow card. Man United 2, Luton 1, are we sleeping on Rasmus Hoyland? He's grabbed a brace against Luton, nine returns in his last six games with seven goals, two assists. And now for the season, he's on 13 goals, two assists. So I think it's fair to say Hoyland has arrived, 15 points in this game. And he's got a double game week of Fulham at home and Forest away next. So let me know in the comments below if you're considering bringing Rasmus Hoyland into your fantasy teams. He had Garnacho with an assist for one of the Hoyland goals. And I'd actually like your opinion on this one because I was arguing with the boys on the Dream Team Tonic about it. I think that Hoyland meant that. Garnacho sort of with the shot, it was going towards Hoyland and I think he turned his body into it and purposely put it in. But I was arguing with Tony. Tony thinks it wasn't. He knew nothing about it. But let me know what you think. Garnacho, eight points, two goals and one assist in his last three. So again, maybe someone to consider. Not one that I think I'll be going for. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, he's going to bug me all season. But he's been very consistent recently. I had him in from the start. I've had him in twice, I think, so far this season. Each time he sort of blanks and falls in price. Um, but he has been consistent lately. Five, seven, five and seven. And then an 11 pointer in his last five matches. Um, so he is in good form. It's just not really in the shape of goals and assists. Like this game, five points come from two tackles, two shots on target, and obviously the, the two appearance points. So yeah, he has been scoring consistently, but you just kind of want to see those attacking returns from him. Um, Dallow with six points, he's in good form at the minute. And maybe if you are liking the look of that Fulham home forest away double, he could be a good option because you had Luke Shaw go off injured and also Wambasaka's out injured at the minute as well. So they are really struggling for those sort of fullback positions. And Dallo is quite offensive. He ended up with three bonus points in this match. Um, on the Luton side of things, um, I'm only going to really mention Morris got his seventh goal of the season. And I just wanted to point out that Colton Morris has got two more goals than Rashford this season. Wolves two, Spurs one. Jao Gomez with a brace, top scoring player um, of game week 24 so far, but don't get carried away. It was his first and his second goal of the season, so not so um, likely to carry this on. Pedro Neto, he is someone in good form, got a great assist for the winning goal. 13th assist of the season and one bonus point, six points. Um, a really good option for this upcoming double game week. Um, I quite like Wang as well, but he didn't really do it in this game. But I do think he could be a good option um, on penalties. And it is a nice double game week. Sheffield United and Brighton next week. Sarabia, two goals, 10 assists for the season. So Huang, uh, sorry, Sarabia and Neto both racking up the assists in this Wolf squad. Um, like I said, Huang started but blanked. I still think we're going to see... Um, some good performances from him coming up, though. Um, you had Balon Dawson with three bonus points at the back. Dawson, always an attacking threat with those headers. Finished with eight player performance marks, three bonus points. Um, but someone that out-bonused Dawson was Emerson Royale, who somehow ended up with the maximum five bonus points. Uh, nine points in total. He won five fouls and had 90 plus pass percentage with three interceptions. If you're interested on how those bonuses get broken down. Um, the reason he was actually playing though is because Pedro Porro is out injured. I think they think that could be a couple of weeks. And then Udogi is also injured. So both fullbacks out currently for Spurs. It was a disappointing one for them. Son was back starting, but just finished with two points. Kulusevski grabbed his sixth goal of the season. Um, but Spurs blank next week, so we aren't going to want to be targeting these Spurs players. Aston Villa 2, Fulham 1, two shots on target, two goals for Ollie Watkins. That's 15 goals, 14 assists for the season. And he's the fourth highest striker on the game at the time of recording, um, which is before Man City, before 
Liverpool's Luton match and before Arsenal's Champions League game. Um, he could have had an assist as well, so he's already got 14 assists. He almost had another one. Um, he had a sort of glancing header that went to Moreno, who scored. So again, Moreno was just such an attacking threat. It didn't quite happen for him in this one. He was offside by barely anything. Um, Bailey... Um, Struck the crossbar from range, really, really good long shot. He's doing well for attack and returns himself as well, but only finished with the two points, but could have been much different if it was a little bit lower down. Uh, Douglas Louise, who's been impressive this season on a number of formats, got three bonus points. He's on corners as well as pens, which really, really helps getting these bonus points um, in terms of like successful crosses. Um, 24 bonus points. And he's just outside the top 10 defenders. He was in 11th at the time of sorting this out. So... Really impressive from Douglas Louise, who is someone that we sort of think of as a more defensive player. Um, Moreno, like I said, unlucky not to score his own goal. Um, well, not an own goal, an actual goal. Um, playing a lot more advanced than Matty Cash. So you had, obviously, Pau Torres and Lengley um, playing centre-back because they've got quite a few injuries. Um, Moreno and Cash, we expect them both to be quite attacking, but actually Matty Cash was playing quite a lot further back than Moreno. Moreno was that guy that had the license to get forward. Um, and if you're interested in that, I always go on Sofa Score and look at their um, heat maps. You can look at the sort of match reports, and then if you click, it will tell you the players' average positions and show the heat maps. Um, but Moreno was replaced by Digne in the end, so maybe there'll be a little bit of rotation come European fixtures. Um, and then from Fulham, just Muniz, um, Rodrigo Muniz. Four goals in his last three games, 10 points, taking his chances. Um, and then Anthony Robinson, um, I think he was at fault for the first goal with a poor throw-in um, that Ollie Watkins ended up stealing um, or scoring from. But he did grab his sixth assist of the season. Nottingham Forest 2, West Ham 0. Moyes under big pressure. Uh, Wani with the first goal and Hudson Odoi with the second. Wani's on six goals, two assists. Um, Hudson Odoi obviously returned in this one, but Anthony Alanga was pretty impressive. Five goals and seven assists for the season. And then you had a Dominguez assist. Uh, it's three losses in a row now for West Ham and no wins in eight. Uh, so Moyes is feeling the pressure. James Ward Prowse managed three bonus points. But there wasn't really much impressive to uh, point out in terms of Dream Team in this match. Um, so six points for Ward Prowse, 10 po um, player performance marks. Um, but I don't think I want to be picking any West Ham players until they um, get their form back. I think a lot of it does revolve around when they can get Paqueta back. Bowen again, three points. He's just dropped completely off form. Um, and then Kudus with two as well usually getting bonus points in every match, but the last few he hasn't been anywhere near. Um, Calvin Phillips as well with a red card. It just hasn't happened for him um, since he's gone to West Ham, but he still probably will end up in the England team. Ariola with six saves. That's about as good as it gets from this match. Four points for Ariola, And then the Monday night match. Everton won, Crystal Palace won. Again, not really much that we'll take in terms of dream team from this game. We had goals from Ayu and Onana. That Ayu goal was really, really good from long range. Um, Mateta and McNeil got the assists. Um, Garner's Everton's um, highest point scorer at the minute. He got six points in this game. Eight player performance marks got him free bonus. Had a shot on target as well. But James Tarkowski finished with five bonus, so hit the maximum bonus and nine points, 13 player performance marks. And if you're wondering what 13 player performance marks looks like or max bonus looks like for a centre-back, I've just brought it up on screen here because I don't recall seeing it that often. One successful cross, one successful dribble, two fouls won, two blocks and five interceptions with an 83% pass completion rate. So... Decent all-round match from Tarkowski, showing that without attacking returns and clean sheets, 
defenders can still sometimes finish with a good lot of points. That is everything for this episode. I'm not going to do my team update in this video. I'll save that for my top players to target video. That will be out in the next couple of days. If you're waiting for a bit more Sun Dream Team content, do check out the Dream Team Tonic podcast. Our latest episode is out now on YouTube and podcast platforms. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.